Let's change the world together. Welcome to the Snapcast, the podcast for all. Let's change the world together. Welcome to the Snapcast, the podcast for all nonprofit professionals, bringing you interviews and amazing ideas for nonprofit leaders. This is Mickey Desai, and welcome to the Nonprofit Snapcast. Today, I'm lucky to have with me David Summerfleck, who is a digital marketing specialist out in my old stomping grounds of Denver, Colorado. David has done a, a lot of stuff in the digital marketing world uh, since the internet basically was web version one. Am I right, David? Yes, that's correct. And yeah. you've you've got quite a, a, quite a resume, if I'm reading things correctly. Are there any highlights that stand out to you amongst your history? Um. I mean, there's really not a single one that is the best. It's more of a cumulative effect, mm -hmm. you know, of, of all the years and basically since the mid 90s to the present, so much that I, I learned and accumulated. Um, I was a business mentor for SCORE, which is a, a well-known uh, division of the United States Small Business Administration. I was a mentor for small business owners for approximately 10 years off and on while I was working for different agencies and until the point where I'm at now where I'm kind of semi-retired and I've tried to focus more on writing and kind of slowing things down a little bit. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things are you writing about? I'm working on a book uh, actually about digital marketing, big surprise. Um, <laughs> Basically, to try to break down digital marketing and talk about it from the perspective of I've noticed so many people tend to focus on price over value on tools over objectives. So I wanted to write something that would have almost min very minimal technical jargon, but would focus more on, you know, let's put things in the right perspective and in, in the right order in order to achieve what we want. Mm -hmm. Nobody wakes up in the middle of the night thinking I need a website. So, you know, it'll solve all my problems. They wake up in the middle of the night saying, I can't pay my mortgage. I can't pay my rent. My nonprofit organization can't get sufficient donors. We're going to go under. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the book and basically what I do, what I'm most passionate about is trying to get people to look at this in terms of let's solve problems and not talk about plugins and widgets and apps and, and you know, how much can I get this for? Why is my free Wix website not delivering the phone calls I thought it would? Well, it's not meant to do that. Mm -hmm. So I want to kind of change the discourse to talking about value and achieving real tangible objectives for a nonprofit you need to get more donors you need money and it's a profound disconnect that i see in a lot of new startups in a lot of new uh nonprofit entities you know well, we don't really need money or it's just we want to help people and that's gold and that's beautiful but i've been there and i started a nonprofit like that and it lasted about three years mm -hmm. and it was just stress and anguish because I didn't put things in the right order. I had a beautiful custom website. I was number one in Google for what I was doing locally, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the offline connections. I didn't have the connections with the court systems that I needed. So even though I was ready to rock and roll, it was just one phone call every, every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Just not enough to sustain any business. So that that's what the book is about, which is a mm -hmm. long-winded answer. So I'm just trying to be quick about it. Sure. No, and I think lessons being learned, I think that's a good segue into the topic I thought we would, would cover today, which is which is what does the average nonprofit need to know about how to how to properly do digital marketing? Oh boy. Uh without getting into real specifics and talking tech. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which really isn't relevant, you know, um, what the nonprofit needs to know is that first of all, it's a process, not an item. And that may seem like a no brainer to some people listening or to yourself. It may seem like, you know, Hey, no kidding. But that's usually the dialogue starts at how much is a website? How much is SEO? How much is e-commerce? I can properly accept donations. How much is help? 
And it's almost like in that scenario, it's like you're going to a, a, a fast food place and you're ordering, instead of ordering the McHappy meal, you're ordering, I want fries, then I want the nuggets, then I want the, the cheeseburger, then I want the soda. And you're not seeing it as a whole and certainly not as a process that a take could take a few months to get going and is going to need tweaking every once in a while to maintain and actually improve your business and help you consolidate overhead, expand into new markets and so on and grow with the, the, the business entity as it does. So the big takeaway is it's a process, not an item. And I, and if I sound passionate about it, it's because it's something I hear every single day, literally Mm -hmm. how much, how long does it take? Um, why is my free DIY site not making my phone ring? Why am mm -hmm. I not getting any emails? And, and the other point that I would say is if you work with an experienced professional, expect, plan for, anticipate, and want specific uh, objectives. Mm -hmm. um, there was, you know, there's... Um, Oh, what is that site? Catch a fire yep. and tap root. And I've actually volunteered on those sites several times. And I've actually, you know, tried to work with several nonprofits and there was a, a government organization I volunteered to help. I said, you know, I love the cause that you do. Um, I'll create a beautiful custom site for you if you let me. Mm -hmm. And I based my design on research conducted by Stanford University's Persuasive Technology Laboratory. So this is not, you know, how is design decided upon? Everything should be based on science and experience. And long story short, there were just, there was just so much um, interdepartmental uh, issues um, and confusion with the board of directors that hadn't been worked out before. And it went from being, you know, a small project to now we're talking 200 pages mm -hmm. and you need a newsletter, but you also need a download PDF format, annual reports, a password protected section. You want donations accepted, which is ideal, but it has to be through this specific uh, protocol, not through this and on and on. And I just said, I'm not getting paid for this. Right. This At what point is this not smart for me? You know, I offered to do it for you according to these criteria so I could get it done quickly and then move on. You got to let me do what I can do. Um, and then conversely, there was another nonprofit that I worked with where I, it was a nonprofit to help disabled homeless veterans, which I think is a wonderful cause that, you know, touches my heart. And I said, look, I can make you number one at Google for this. Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. And you know what happened? Yep. As soon as the site went live, the person in charge started emailing me and saying, we're getting phone calls. What do we do? <laughs> People want to donate money, but our bank account is not set up as a 501c3. Right. And I said, well, you better explain that to the IRS because they will audit you, especially if you're new. You know, I was audited every year that my nonprofit functioned mm. and we barely made anything. Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons I discontinued it because I'm, you know, look, this is not about, you know, profit. This is about doing something I enjoy doing and helping mm -hmm. people as an ancillary offering here. You're getting audited every time, you know, annually on a regular recurring basis. It's not fun. No. And I think you're talking about something that's sort of universal to the nonprofit sector on the whole, at least on the most part, most people, most people start working in the nonprofit world out of, out of pure passion yeah, and, yeah. and fail to take a look at the actual business practices that need to temper their passion and in order to make things run properly. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm trying to, to go through, th you know, different points uh, briskly, but, and, and again, with a score, which is, you know, mm -hmm. pre pretty well, you know, been around since at least 50 years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and as a, as a mentor for them, uh, I must have gotten hundreds of phone calls in, in emails uh, from nonprofits, for profits, entrepreneurs, CEOs, retiring. And the, the, the common threads were, again, if you're going to use marketing, what for, you know, the idea is to get more phone calls to make more money. And, um, 
like you said, with most NPOs, the board of the 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 people at the top of the food chain of the hierarchy are get are collecting salaries, but marketing is an afterthought. What you're going to do, how we're going to brand ourselves, all of that is after the NPO is already established. Now we have to go back and rebuild the site, rebrand all the marketing. So it's really about seeing things as a process, I think, and then putting things in respective order. So when I work with clients now, I always say, look, I'll talk to you a couple of times to see if we're a good fit. Then I want you to do a workbook. Mm -hmm. And and, and the resistance sometimes, well, it's, I'm not a child. No, I never said you were, Mm -hmm. but I want you to do a workbook anyway. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because we need to put things in the proper perspective and order in order mm-hmm. to get things uh, accomplished. So know? it forces the individual to take a look at their passions from a more strategic point of view. Absolutely. Because, like I said at the beginning, if you want a website, why? I mean, as simple a question as it is, it's also profound to a lot of people. If you want a nonprofit and you mm-hmm. want to start one, why? Mm-hmm. Is it to appease your ego? Is it because you feel guilty and want to right some kind of wrong? Or is it because you, you know, you legitimately you want to make a difference in the community? Well, if that's the case, all the more reason to be organized and very deliberate mm-hmm. in, in what you do and how you do it, because you're not going to you may not get a second chance. Right. You know, in, in bankruptcy court, uh, letting people go you know, deleting your site because you're not getting anywhere with it. That's just, you know, let's, let's succeed. You know, let's just get things done the right way. So I'm very, very blessed that I'm semi-retired now. (laughs) Um, and and I can pick and choose who I work with, but, um, I, I I don't, I want to knock it out of the park. Yeah. For, so I always tell everybody we got to slow things down and focus on achieving real goals. And I think part of the disconnect is seeing how can digital marketing, which is an intangible, you know, like growth, you know, how can how can digital marketing help me really get more phone calls? There was a question I answered on Quora the other day. How can SEO, which is search engine optimization, which is how you outrank competitors in Google? How can that actually make my phone ring and make more money? Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, let's put things in order. And, and then you can very plainly see how one thing leads to another. Mm-hmm. Which sort of leads me to the next question, which is, you know, you, you take the average nonprofit and a lot of nonprofits do the business case well. They, they have the, the business plan down yes. um, and you have, you know, hopefully a good room of volunteer board members that know their stuff once they start to get to the point where they look at their digital assets you know their website their social media presence are there any elements of that that they should be sure to include or should be sure to avoid yeah and Mm -hmm. let me tell you it's actually the answer was in your question Mm -hmm. because what you said let's look at the website now let's look at the social media now let's look at the seo now let's look at the content Content is still king because Google indexes hello text. Google looks for links to scholarly authoritative blogs. So you really can't have one without the other. So a lot of people will go to Wix or Weebly or Squarespace, or they'll work with a neighborhood hobbyist guy, which is fine if it's a hobby. But for a legitimate nonprofit organization, you need income. You need money coming in to in order to to market the business and grow. And um, y- you got to see it as a, as a process again. So very, very uh, as quickly as I can say it, if you visualize a website is what it used to be called a portal. Mm-hmm. They used to call websites portals. And the reason for that is because technically everything goes through the company website. So employees should have a place that they go to log in, to download HR forms. I knew a restaurant owner who used the um, employee portal for the, the employees to log in and actually clock in once they got to the restaurant because it would track the IP address. 
Mm-hmm. So his employees would come to work and log in on the company website, download their paycheck uh, or their, the you know, the pay stub, the HR forms, the benefits information. The employees were actually allowed to have like a blog. They were encouraged because it would, it would decrease turnover if employees could get involved and write about new recipes or, or programs they're doing, how they're doing in college, whatever. And it made people want to go to the website to learn more about the the staff. And there are some NPOs that actually do do that. So my point is that the website should be seen as a portal through which the content, the SEO, the e-commerce, so you can process payments for services or goods or downloads or for events or for reservations or what have you. All of that should funnel through the website. Mm -hmm. So not taken piecemeal bit by bit, but as a single whole. So my advice is to either work with an agency, which is more costly, or find an experienced professional who you can work with and just say, look, we want to start and build a foundation on this. We want to achieve specific objectives. We want to achieve specific metrics that are realistic. And we, we're really serious about this. This is not a hobby for us. How can we best set this up? How does budgeting work if we don't know? And honestly, most nonprofits know intellectually how to budget, but I think they try to get deals. Mm-hmm. To, and it's chopping off your nose to spite your face. Mm-hmm. If you want to, and I want to say this very quickly because I hear the the question about money and price every day. Like I said, if you want to put an ad in a newspaper, it's not a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. It's not free because they're not running a charity. They're running a, a legitimate profit driven business, mm-hmm. just as everybody else is, except the NPO. Mm-hmm. So, how do you budget for digital marketing that will achieve specific results? just as you would for putting an ad in a newspaper or putting an ad on radio or putting an ad on the side of a bus. The more people you want to reach, the more money you need to bring in, the greater your budget should be. Mm -hmm. So to put an ad in a local newspaper, last I checked, it was around at least three grand Mm -hmm. or they wouldn't talk to you. And this was probably five, 10 years ago. So I don't know what it is now, but if you want to put an ad in a newspaper, that's usually how it works. And after you stop paying, the phone calls stop. And if you ask the newspaper, can you guarantee results? They'll tell you, of course not. Right. So the asset, the, the value in digital marketing is in many cases, yeah, we can guarantee results. We can actually look in under the hood, so to speak, and look at Google Analytics, and we can tell you who's visiting your website, what time, from what country, from what city, what they're looking at, what they're going to. We can measure how many downloads you're getting. You And when I work with clients, I guarantee them within certain realistic you know, limits. Um, but also, the difference is with digital marketing is when you stop paying, like the project for the most part is over. Now we're going to switch into a, an ongoing maintenance plan to make sure everything is kept up well. Mm-hmm. That's like a quarter of that amount. And you're always going to get results. So it continues indefinitely over the course of however, you know, the lifetime of the NPO. Mm-hmm. So the ROI is much, much greater. And that's why most newspapers today in 2019 are actually going under because they don't know how to compete against news, you know, uh, Google and LinkedIn Mm -hmm. and Facebook. So very few people actually advertise in newspapers anymore for that reason. Right. You know, if you want to put an ad in the Yellow Pages today, 2019, I think it's like 500 a month or something, depending on where you live. My which is which is insane, because who who uses them anymore? I can't even get one. Hmm. Yeah, I you know I have these little local <laughs> yellow pages things showing up on my doorstep from time to time, and yeah, I can't remember the last time I've ever used it. Yeah, and they're like half the size of what they used to be. Mm-hmm. Now, if you can get one, if you can find one, you use it to you know change a light bulb or something, you know. Um, 
or, or you know, or you get, I would give it to my, my pet rabbit to play with, but <laughs> you don't use it to look anything up because it's just so inefficient. You take out your phone and you look it up in Google. So this derails the conversation for a quick second here, but why doesn't the Yellow Pages companies, why don't those publishers actually just start distributing CDs instead of paper books? Well, for one thing, nobody uses CD anymore, really. That's I mean, a good point. <laughs> I mean, if I gave you a CD, what would you, you know, you might use it for Frisbee or something, <laughs> you know, um, and really quite honestly, giving out business cards, I just tell everybody DMS.blue. Yeah. I mean, how hard is that to remember? You either want to or you don't. But the Yellow Pages, it's just like all these other companies that unfortunately just do not know how to innovate. They're right. so big, they just can't pivot. Mm -hmm. And you see that going on. Uh, they call it the retail apocalypse, uh, the number of small businesses going under who, uh, in large retail outlets. We all have a retail outlet, outlet that we like that's going under, you know, Sears, um, you know, Kmart, uh, Walmart is still doing well, but certainly not at the rate that Amazon is. And they just, they don't know how to compete. They're not the way that Amazon is. And it's so simple. Mm -hmm. If I go to walmart.com, I can't find half of the items that I can find on Amazon or eBay, which is pretty sad because they've mm -hmm. got the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So it's a long winded response because I'm very passionate about it, but yeah, it's, it's embracing the new technology, uh, which really isn't that new at this point, but it's not, it, it hasn't been around for a complete generation yet. So a lot of people my age or older might feel like, look, we didn't ask for the internet. We don't necessarily want it. We don't know how to deal with it, but they all use it to pay their bills and look things up. So it's a, a, a disconnect there. Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to look at it as, look, it's not a fad. Um, it's not going away. If anything, it's going to increase more and more as retail, as we know it, basically disappears very mm -hmm. slowly. You know, pay less shoes. I used to love them. And they declared bankruptcy. Sears declared bankruptcy. Um, you know, I know Barnes & Noble, which I love, has, you know, changed hands uh, in ownership, you know, like several times. And there's several other big, huge, big box stores that are going to go under soon. Mm -hmm. uh, they just, they don't know how to innovate, you know? Right. I mean, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it, it's very sad. Yeah, it seems like the next real money makers are the folks who can actually do delivery better. Right. And then if you look yeah. at Walmart, every city has a Walmart. Mm -hmm. Why can't they deliver? Well, it's because they don't want to or they don't see the value in it. And yet they could easily partner with Uber or Lyft or what have you and do the exact same thing that Amazon does. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the same Toys R Us. Where are they now? Bankruptcy court. And they could have done the same thing. Every city had a Toys R Us, but they just could not or didn't want to pivot. Or maybe they thought they didn't have to. This is really excellent stuff, and I think I fear we're running out of time. Um, could we could we turn around and do another quick episode to drill down to some of the more specifics? And I sure, mean, I guess we we can't get too specific just because of our time frame. But uh, but if we could talk about more of the how to or what to do element sure. for nonprofits, I think that would be pretty valuable. I'm, I'm ready to go. I've had my caffeine. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, David, this has been a real pleasure, and I'm, and I'm glad you could join us for this, um, for this episode of the Nonprofit Snapcast. If it were appropriate, how would a listener contact you? Um, absolutely. All you got to do is go to that little white bar in Google and type in dms.blue. It's a real website domain. And um, dms.blue, you can put the www in front of it if you want to, but you don't need to. dms.blue, um, you can call me, my office rather, at 424-DAVID-01. And I'm always happy to help out and start a conversation.